Hi, neighbors. I hope you're having a good day. It's Emily Bartlett here with the Fairfield Harbor podcast. And today I am going to be reviewing the January 2023 Beacon. This includes a lot of news and information aside from our newsletter about Fairfield Harbor. It comes out monthly. And this today's recording will be volume 39, the January. And I cannot stay on this beautiful picture of the beacon that you see on the screen. Uh, but this photo was submitted by Elaine Burbridge. We had some beautiful, uh, very dramatic and bright rainbows that happened at the end of a storm in December 2022. And Elaine took this beautiful photo. And so while I read through the beacon, I have made it my background image that you can see here. So while I may look funny, which happens all the time, um, I'm not concerned about that with the virtual background, but I could not resist the opportunity to use this photo uh, for that. So Elaine, thank you so much for submitting your photo. It is beautiful. Um, and I will say, while we're talking about the photos, if you go to the Beacon's website, you can click here on submit your favorite photos to Fairfield Harbor. And there is a whole gallery of neighbor submitted photos that we can peruse through. So thank you so much to everyone that has submitted a photo. Here's the email address to submit it to fhbeaconnews at gmail.com to have your photos featured on the website. All right. I'm going to start here with the features. I'm going to first shout out Celeste McAllister, who's been making a lot of really great updates to the community calendar. You can always click on the community calendar here. There are some variations between the community calendar, the list of happenings here that we find on the front page of the beacon and what's in our newsletter. Uh, and I've reached out to Celeste to see if we can reconcile some of those variations. For example, the um, today on the 17th, there is not a listing for the POA board meeting. So just to better understand uh, what gets captured here versus what gets captured in the newsletter. And then uh, we'll make sure that we have kind of a comprehensive calendar moving forward, or I, I at least know everywhere to pull from whenever I'm doing our week in review prior to the start of the week. So always check out the calendar of events there. And keep in mind, if you have items that you would like to have featured on the calendar of events, please reach out to the POA office. They would love the details to be able to share that with others across the communities. So I've seen a couple things posted that are coming up related to Valentine's Day in the social media channels on Facebook. Uh, please call the office and get those added to the calendar. I'm sure lots of folks would like to know that those things are happening. Chris Rivera wrote an article uh, for the January edition of The Beacon about our World War II veteran, Wally Curry, who turned, or who turned 100. World War II veteran turns 100. Wally Curry ce celebrated his 100th birthday on December 27th. Happy birthday, Wally. That's amazing. Along with many friends and family members at the community center. Among those attendees were Wally's three children, seven grandchildren, and six great-grandchildren who traveled across seven states to be here. World War II veteran Wally joined the Army in 1942, just before his 20th birthday. And while he was an engineering student at Drexel College, in a short time he became an expert rifleman, a qualified sniper, and he graduated from Officers Candidate School and headed to Europe, the HMS Queen Elizabeth, with 15,000 other troops. They later shipped out to Normandy and landed on Utah Beach. His unit was later awarded a congressional citation. Here is Wally and all of his family and friends celebrating his birthday at the community center. Love these pictures. As a civilian, Wally spent his career in management with Pepperidge Farm. Following a retirement in 1987, Wally and his beloved wife, Dot, moved to Fairfield Harbor. They were both very active. Wally is an avid golfer, and Dot was well known for singing in the Fairfield Har Harbor Chorus during until her passing. 
Wally is known to be a great storyteller, and his recent birthday party was the perfect opportunity to share stories with guests while some of his favorite tunes from the 1940s played in the background. After cake and ice cream were served, Wally stood up with the microphone in hand and thanked everyone for being there, being a part of his life, and he offered some personal observations about what he's experienced in 100 years. Wally maintains a vivid memory of his life's experiences, which is precisely what makes him such a fascinating storyteller. Wally, happy birthday. Thank you so much for sharing your life with us. This is amazing, and I love the photos. Thanks, Chris, for writing this article. It's wonderful. All right. Pet of the month is one of my neighbors, Monet. Love that. Monet is a female African gray parrot. We joined her flock shortly after she was hatched nine years ago and took her out on a boat cruising the coast of Maine for a month. We bonded and she has become an essential part of our life. Linda and Phil Katz are Monet's family and they live on Plymouth Court as well. Though very demanding at times, Monet has taught Phil and Linda the, her daily routine. Early in the morning after being uncovered, she greets us with good morning, puts her head down and asks for a rub-a-dub, then demands breakfast or fresh yum-yums consisting of pasta, fruit, and vegetables. She snacks during the day on special parrot food, but especially likes treats of nuts. She loves to join our conversations, and if we get too animated, she tells us to whisper. Throughout the day, she responds to prompts. She can count to five and recites her truncated renditions of Take a Walk on the Wild Side and Peter Piper. Parrots are known for their ability to mimic, but Monet also clearly knows how to manipulate Phil and Linda. Late afternoon, she tells them night-night, wanting to be covered up, and tells them that she loves them. Give me a kiss, knowing she will get nut treats to snack on after she's covered up for the night. Monet is also musically talented, able to whistle shortened versions of Brahms lullaby, jingle bells, and the Jeopardy theme song. Smart. We could go on about her for a long time, but we won't. You can tell we love our delightful African gray parrot Monet. But I'll just heart this one right here while I'm sitting here. Phil and Linda, thank you so much for writing that article. I love. I didn't know she could do so many things. We're definitely going to have to come over and say hi. The Fairfield Harbor Dog Park is much more than a place to take your dog. This article was written by Bob Gilham. Fairfield Harbor Dog Park, located off Barbary Coast Drive, has become a popular location for dog lovers and their furry loved ones. It's a place to meet new friends and see familiar ones, both humane and canine. Did I say humane? I did. Humane, humans, and canine. In a semi-secluded, tree-lined enclosure, a great place to forget about your day-to-day -day issues for an hour or so, enjoy watching your dogs play, and have a ball with buddies or new dog friends. The park's regular hour or regulars include all sizes of breeds ranging from Gentle Giant Lakota, the Malamute at 140 pounds, to Murphy, Kinsey, and Maisie, weighing in at about 10 to 12 pounds each. We even have a couple of three-legged ones who fit right in with the others. Several large breeds tip the scales at 85 plus pounds, and there are dogs at every weight, down to the little guys and gals. While our canines tend to play with those of similar size, there are instances where the little ones more than hold their own with the larger dogs. Sounds right. It's truly amazing to observe the interplay of the canines and the joy they display with one another. Whether running after a ball, wrestling, chasing each other, or playing tug of war, the dogs seem to relish their surroundings. Leashes or other devices do not restrain them so they can be unencumbered. The only warning for humans is that dogs tend to run first, look second. After a few minutes, my dogs are very excited about learning about the <laughs> dog park. <laughs> uh, 
So, okay, our warning for humans. Dogs tend to run first and look second. And after a few minutes of continuous playing, they will sit or drink some water and suddenly they're off again. It's so impressive to note the various personalities of the dogs. Some are relaxed, others hyper, and most somewhere in between. They have their favorite buddies with whom they tend to play, but most dogs are eager to meet new folks, both canine and human. Dogs display many emotions associated with humans, companionship, affection, and jealousy. Most dogs share their feelings openly without restraint or hidden motives. Maybe humans could learn a little something from them. Over the past several years, I have observed many beautiful things at the dog park. Perhaps the most outstanding occurred over a year ago. A young mother came to the park with her puppy and young children. One of the youngsters, maybe two or three years old, was running and tripped unhurt in the middle of the park. The little one was several yards from the nearest adult when the gentle giant Lakota came and stood over the fallen child to protect her from the other dogs until the child's mother came to pick her up. The gentle giant had never seen the child before, and I'm sure he is a hero in that mother's eyes. If you have a dog and have not yet visited the dog park, please make plans to do so. If your dog is shy, there's a second fenced-in area to let your dog get accustomed to all the sights, sounds, and smells. The dog park's regulations are clearly posted on the gate. And please notice to pick up after your pets if they go to the bathroom. And no food, please. I suggest you close the gate to take your dog off its leash as soon as it enters the park. Dogs at the park tend to bark and congregate near the entrance when a new dog enters the gate. If your dog's off its leash, it will not feel as threatened. Also, it's probably wise to quickly get your dog and yourself out of the area between the two fenced-in areas since the area is confined, and you and your dog will feel safer in a more open space. Once inside, you'll be surprised at how quickly your dog will adapt to their new friends. After a few moments of butt sniffing, your dog will become a part of the pack and a welcome member of the canine fraternity. Finally, the dog park is therapy for humans as well. It's a place to forget about your day-to-day -day issues for a few minutes because you're surrounded by pure love and joy. A dog is indeed a friend that loves its owner unconditionally if the owner only meets it halfway. Dogs, like humans, are social animals, and a great way to show your love for your dog is to let it run around with fellow dogs. Who knows? You may enjoy the experience and meet new friends yourself, both human and canine. Remember what Harry Truman said, if you want a friend, get a dog. I want to offer special thanks to the following friends, Murphy, Sophie 1 and 2, Milo, 1, 2 and 3, Montana, Dory, Misty, Max, Lila, Mulligan, Chase 1 and 2, Shorty, Mackenzie, Maisie, Ty, Cooper, Bailey, Thor, Millie, Moya, Bernie, Ginger, Rocco, Bo, Jada, Ramaki, Scout, Smudge, Luna, Lakota, Spirit, Gracie, Jax, and of course, Caro. I am sure I forgot some of my friends and I apologize. My memory is not as good as theirs. God, that dog park sounds fun. We have two dogs, Sunset Shimmer and Jackson. Sunset Shimmer got her name because when my daughter named her, we got her from the Humane Society in Charlotte. And she was very into my little pony. And we assured her that Princess Celestia would not fit on the name tag. So Sunset Shimmer it is. <laughs> and then we got Jackson after we moved here to Fairfield Harbor. And we picked him up in Jacksonville, North Carolina. So much fun. We will have to visit the dog park. We have not done that. All right. Elaine Burbridge, again, photo. I don't know if you can see. Uh, but she has submitted this article about St. Nicholas a.k.a. Sam Curry, carrying on the tradition. One of the most beloved traditions at our Fairfield Harbor Christmas Parade is the appearance of St. Nicholas, played by Sam Curry. Sam has been playing at St. Nicholas ever since most residents can remember. And before that, he had been in the parade as a member of the Broken Paddle Coffee Clatch. Are those the guys that drink coffee twice a week? I think so, that we talked about earlier in the newsletter. 
um, as a member of the Fairfield Harbor Yacht Club. This year, as in previous years before riding in the Fairfield Harbor Parade, Sam visited children at Christ Episcopal Church, where the tradition of his visits began. Sam started portraying St. Nicholas at Christ Episcopal Church in downtown New Bern by visiting each service during the Christmas season. During the children's sermon, Sam told the story of St. Nicholas. Sam shared that the most enjoyable part of portraying St. Nicholas is seeing the smiling and curious faces of the young children. Prior to coming to New Bern, Sam was Santa several times at his church in Pittsburgh, but it was not until New Bern that St. Nicholas arrived. The costume that he wears every year also has history. A member of Christ Episcopal Church made the costume. Del Curry made his mitre, the headdress, and Sam completed his crossier, the walking staff, and I'm hoping I said that right. St. Nicholas Feast Day is December 6th, which is very close to the timing of the Fairfield Harbor Parade. So it's appropriate for St. Nicholas to make his first appearance. Feast Day is celebrated in many countries, and the legend has evolved into many different characters, including Santa Claus. Living around 300 AD in Turkey, Nicholas of Myra had very wealthy parents who died when he was a young boy. St. Nicholas used his inheritance to help the poor and needy and was known to secretly toss gold coins through open windows into stockings hung by the fire to dry. He also saved sailors who were in danger on the seas. Because of his good deeds and faithfulness to God, he was made a priest and bishop. After his death, St. Nicholas was made a saint. Sam was raised in the Philadelphia suburbs and graduated from Penn State in business logistics. After graduation, he attended Navy Officer Candidate School and served out of Norfolk and San Francisco. He then worked for U.S. Steel for 31 years. That's a long time. After retiring, the Currys yearned for warmer weather and wanted to be near the water, enjoying their boating passion. After some research, they settled on New Bern, where Dell and Sam have been for 23 years. They've been married for 58 years and have two sons, three grandchildren. And while they've kept busy sailing for 15 years and volunteering at Christ Church, Tryon Palace, and the Fireman's Museum, Sam has worked part-time for SOS Global Express, a freight forwarder headquartered in New Bern for 20 years, doing insurance and claim settlement. Sam related, despite being out of our house for a year from Hurricane Florence, we could not think of a place we'd rather live. So we're here for the duration. St. Nicholas, a.k.a. Sam, the Fairfield Harbor community is glad you're here as well. And we look forward to more years of St. Nicholas. Love that. Sam, I love learning about you. Thank you so much, Elaine, for writing that article. That was amazing. All right, our last feature article for volume 39, the January 2023 edition of The Beacon is the Swimnastics Groups returning to Fairfield Harbor's Christmas Parade in high style. These ladies were a lot of fun to watch at the Christmas Parade. The Fairfield Harbor Parade was an excellent introduction to the holiday season. There were 42 entries, all involved time and energy to make this event great. The following article is about how the swimnastics group got ready for the parade. Thanks, Jan and Elaine, for writing this article. Shortly after, I'm going to leave the picture up for a second. Shortly after the swimnastics group had its Halloween costume contest, the group started asking about participation in the Christmas parade. The group used to participate regularly, but had not for some time. After seeing renewed interest, Jan developed a plan. Enthusiastic swimnastics members joined her and came up with more ideas. Since the parade is in December and the weather can be unpredictable, wearing swimsuits, not an option although that would have been amazing. The plan called for participants to wear warm outer garments of black clothing. Then the group accessorized with summer pool hats, glasses, and towels. To add excitement, the lively group added pool noodles decorated with battery-operated lights and bells. Members decided to drive home the swimnastics theme by wearing swimsuits over warm clothing. Smart. The swimnastics members marched in the parade and did a few exercises with their noodles. Those unable to walk the parade could ride in a golf cart and throw candy out to onlookers. Janet Hikes made the parade reservation and obtained battery-operated lights to decorate the noodles, and Shelly Townley acquired jingle bells. 
Jan Reitzel, I hope I got your name right, uh, used her crafting skills gained as a teacher to design the banner. The day of the parade, December 4th, was a beautiful, calm day, and 16 enthusiastic class members marched, rode, and threw candy behind the swimnastics banner. The next day, instructor Jenny Banchard, Banchard? commented on the hard work and enthusiasm that went into planning such a successful parade performance. The parade enthusiasm shows the fun and energy daily at the Broad Creek Recreation Center during swimnastics class. Swimnastics meets regularly at 9 a.m. Monday through Friday and welcomes new members for exercise, music, and fun. Everyone in the, in the, December 4th Christmas parade did a great job. This was our first year um, attending and my daughter loved getting candy for her and her brother. It was unexpected, very much appreciated. <laughs> All right. POA board news. This article is about the Craven County carts program. We talked about this in the newsletter earlier this week. The Craven County CARTS program, the CARTS stands for Craven Area Rural Transit System. It is a transportation system that gives rides to folks in need, and it's available to all communities within the New Bern city limits, or I say New Bern limits. Um, here in Fairfield Harbor, we underutilize the CART system. And so there was a community meeting actually held today at 3 o'clock p.m., in the community center where Kelly Walker, the CARTS director and county commissioner, Mark Toms, spoke about CARTS and all of the services that Craven County offers. I was not able to attend. I worked right before I did this recording, but I'm hoping that we will have some really great updates from folks um, that were able to attend in person. Gail Abertini Fairfield Harbor artists show original art at the Point Restaurant. The Point Restaurant is now showing and selling some of Fairfield Harbor's artists' best original paintings. Look at this. That's a big gallery. Spearheaded by POA at President Phil Hewitt, the Point Restaurant walls are now filled with original paintings by Fairfield Harbor artists. Hanging from a museum-style cable system, the artwork showcases the artwork, and they are for sale. The artists collect the money and donates 10% of the profit to the Point Restaurant. It's a win-win. Artists are now artists showing now are Deborah Burrington, Pam Gaskell, Janet Hikes, Brenda Singh, Blake Sawn, and Gina Wetz. Art will be rotated quarterly. And if you're interested in showing and selling your art at the Point Restaurant, please call Janet Hikes. Her number is 717-253-3703. Or you can start by the, the Point Restaurant at your earliest convenience to check out the artwork and inquire about how to get your art hung on the wall. You might just find something that you can't live without. And a good meal. All right. Gail, more parade pictures. I think this is going to be the video. I am not going to show the videos, but you can always go to fhbeacon.com um, to see Al's complete video of the parade, as well as stars of the 2022 Fairfield Harbor POA Holiday Parade. Um, Photos submitted were by Deb Rothingast. A picture is worth a thousand words, and we have a lot of photo coverage of the parade. You can check out all the photos and videos to relive that day. Again, that was December 4th. Oh, wow. We have aerial drone photography by Alan Fairbanks. He does a great job with the aerial photography. Let's see if we can blow these up. These look great. So good. Hmm. All right. Thanks, Alan. And Bob. And Deb. And Al. For all the videos and all the pictures. A big thank you to all who participated in the 26th annual Fairfield Harbor Parade. 
The 2022 floats were terrific. There were 42 entries and more than 350 people in the parade. Streets were packed with viewers cheering for the parade. The parade team this year included Deb Lutz and the Fairfield Harbor Special Events Committee. They were instrumental in decorating Red Sail Park, arranging Santa's visit, lining up the reindeer golf carts, and ensuring Santa had gifts for children. Plus, they supplied the cart bond porta potty. Thanks, Rose McNeil, for the social media posts promoting the event. Special thanks to the safety committee, Benny Thompson, security chair, Pat DeMond, Bob Heal, Rose Goodwin, and her security team, Jim Hart, Department Chief, Tri Community Volunteer Fire and Rescue Department, and his team. The Fairfield Harbor Parade Committee wore hats this year. Special thanks to Phil Hewitt and Rich Miller, the POA board members, for cooking those hot dogs. And thank you, Kevin Griffin from Storm Guard, for the hot dog and bun donation. Les Pendleton drove Santa in high style in his sassy Chevy golf. Chevy, yeah, golf cart. Lee Peppercorn, Elaine McElry, Elaine Steinbeck, Nancy, and Dave Wills managed and organized the food at Red Sail. RMG, Stevie Penn, and Rachel Bell coordinated the sweets and iced tea donation. Thank you, Lee, for the coffee and fixings. Phyllis Godwin was instrumental in her organizational skills and fresh ideas. Will Caudill and his team were extremely valuable in mounting the lineup stakes, blocking roads, and many details of our fabulous maintenance crew does. Jennifer, our community manager, keeps us all straight and provides invaluable support. Our lineup guides this year were Phyllis Godwin, Jenny Nebby, Kevin Griffin, Doris Dean, David Miller. I'm going to stop and say there have been a lot of names in this article specifically. And if I ever say one wrong, it is my sincerest apologies. <laughs> names are not my strong suit. Um, as you can tell from some of the ways I say Fairfield Harbor, sometimes speaking is not my strong suit. Um, but I appreciate you listening. And thank you, everyone who is noted in this article for everything that you did to make this year's Christmas parade a success. Um, Wayne Stalsbog for driving the Grand Marshal Phyllis, Will Trout, and Steve Steinbeck for driving Grand Marshal Ray Redness, my neighbor. Bob Dumont, Deb Rothengas, and Al Asher, thank you so much for the photos and videos that you will give us memories that last forever. And let's not forget Alan Fairbanks for his aerials. Those 42 entries have an organizer that rallies their teams, makes plans, and decorates. It takes an entire community to run a parade, and Fairfield Harbor has the best volunteers ever. When Fairfield Harbor folks volunteer, they give their all. Fairfield Harbor residents and clubs were incredibly generous. Total donations for the West Craven Marching Band Eagles was $1,022. Great job, neighborhood. It's amazing. Well, please come back to fhbeacon.com and check out these videos from the Christmas parade, especially if you weren't able to attend this year. It was a good time had by all. All right, here's Phil's POA board update. Here's what happened in less than five months with new board leadership. Phil Hewitt is our president. Rich Miller is our vice president. Dan Argentieri is our treasurer. Rhonda Miller is our secretary. Craig Myler, director. John Rothengas, director. Gail Albertini, director. Les Pendleton, director. I'm going to bullet these out. I love a bullet list. God, it's my favorite. Reduced meetings to once a month and streamlined the process to operate like a business. Revenues are up for the restaurant and the golf course with more people dining and playing golf. Established a revenue source for capital expenditures through land sales. Stay tuned for an exciting announcement that will change Fairfield Harbor and celebrate our 50 years coming soon. Resurfaced the pickleball courts. New pavement was at the Truist ATM parking lot with a new section for food vendors. Remodeled the Point Restaurant. The restaurant underwent major remodeling for sound abatement. Added a weight station, providing increased efficiency, installed new carpeting and an oversized drone shot of our peninsula and a wall for local artists to showcase their artwork, which is going to be for sale, like we talked about earlier. Rebranded the Point Restaurant to be more inclusive for the community and the public at no cost. Recruited a new chef at no cost. 
started a new stone monument for a grand entrance at our community. Golf maintenance building is newly painted with landscaping and a new paved driveway. Created a golf, a new golf advisory panel to bridge any communication gap for golf member concerns. Three electronic billboards to expand communication of events and information to the neighborhood. These new monument signs are located at the community center, both main entrances. Additional signs will also be transitioning to the new look to match the new logo. I have questions. I hope that you guys discuss those at today's board meeting and or we will have an opportunity to ask questions about some of this new rebranding and some of our community infrastructure. I, I can see a vision. I have some questions. Um, additional street lights at the end of Broad Creek Road to aid navigation past the marina. New cart pass at the Harbor Point Golf Course, Hole 7, 13, 14, and 15. Hired an architecture consultant to assist Harbor Club development. A new, more informative, and user-friendly beacon with increased readership. New windows and doors at both guard shacks to update the look and improve insulation for gate personnel. Repaved Santa Lucia, repaved Spinnaker Court, and a portion of Canavan Road. Newly paved entrance to the dog park and parking area with a new shelter and water for dogs. Red Cell Park is no longer a dirt entrance, but a paved parking area. A new entrance to the pickleball courts and parking area. And if you want to be part of the solution, please join a committee and make change a reality for our neighborhood. I agree. We have a lot of um, committees going around. I'm learning more and more as I do these. So... Thanks, Phil, for that update. Club updates. And something just started playing music. I love it. <laughs> um, Anne Griffith, club update. It's time for New Year's resolutions. But is it? Maybe this year our resolutions should just be like, be nice. Get outside more right? Consider joining Fairfield Harbor Tai Chi group. Fairfield Harbor's Tai Chi group is going to begin new classes on Thursday, January 5th, 2023. They're going to meet from 840 to 940 every Thursday in the community center. Masks are required. The first half of the class is dedicated to Qi Gong exercises. The second half to learn the Tai Chi Chuan long form a la Fairfield Harbor. Both Tai Chi Chuan and King Kui Gong. I feel like I just butchered that so bad. Um, but anyway, they are low impact exercises that concentrate on developing flexibility, balance, breath control, focus, and memory. If you have questions before new classes begin, or if you want to join now that they've already started, please contact the group by email at FFH Tai Chi, that's T-A-I-C-H-I at gmail.com or text leaving a phone message with Ann Griffin at six oh, Griffith at 607-435-7965. She'll get back to you. Oh, love the background music. All right, Chris Rivera, Fairfield Harbor Light Players are going to wrap up the year. It's been a very busy time for the Harbor Lights players this year. There have been many activities in addition to the popular spring play, May the Force Be With You. In March, our new annual picnic was held in June when the, when the walk and bathtub improv team from New Bern Civic Theater came to share their talents and skills with the group. Several members expressed interest in developing a team here in the harbor to help enhance our performance skills, and work has begun. Stay tuned for upcoming announcements about future improv activities. We would love to have you join us. We completed the membership drive with our annual wine and cheese social in September. This was in 2022, okay? And it was a pleasure to add many new friends to share in the fun. Next was the ever popular Follies, and some have said it was one of the best shows ever. The Harbor, sorry, Harbor Light Players Christmas party was held in early December 2022. 
It was celebrated with lots of food and beverages and added storytelling and improv games. A reminder that the karaoke club is also part of the Harbor Lights Players, and there is a karaoke party every month. Karaoke New Year's Eve is a favorite each year and should not be missed. Our group is currently very busy with auditions and castings for next year's spring play, which will be ready to hit the stage in March. Looking forward to that. That's just in, what, seven or eight weeks? We're obviously a very active group that's committed to having fun. There's something of interest for everyone, whether it's on or off stage. So what are you waiting for? Call the Harbor Lights players. Get involved. It's a very good group. I feel like we should just sit here and dance this music for a minute. All right. Harvey Pye and Steve Mink talk about the fishing club. These were meeting notes from their December 7th meeting. It was held at the Fairfield Harbor Community Center and was primarily a year-end Christmas celebration. The various club leaders presented the monthly finance account and membership announced the new dues of $20 for annual membership starting January 2023. Club logo, visors, and mugs are available awaiting new caps. No update from the webmaster. The club will have the financial statements and accounts audited this year end. A report will be given to members at the January 2023 meeting. From the floor, there was discussion after some debate. A motion was made, seconded for the club to donate $250 to the West Craven High School Band that performed in the Fairfield Harbor POA Christmas Parade. Member Gail Abertini was given a check to pass to the West Craven High School Band group on behalf of the Fairfield Harbor Fishing Club. Harvey announced this is his final meeting as club coordinator. Steve Mink was introduced as the head of the club in 2023 with the leadership team, Jim Spatheros, George Maravellas, Wayne Massetti, Art Thingolstad, John McLean, and Bob Bruggerworth, advisor. I'm going to say concierge. That's wrong. I know. Sorry. There is a video here, so make sure you go out to fhbeacon.com to watch it. The evening to celebrate Christmas was conceived and managed by Jim Spartheros and Steve Mink and their wives, Kathy S. and Paula M. Creatively managed and supervised the decorations and food tables, members, wives, and partners added great food choices and an atmosphere of cheer and warmth to the evening. The program gift exchange was fun as members swapped and scooped up gifts. Several choice gifts were moved from hand to hand. Once it was all settled, it was evident all enjoyed the night. Kudos to Jim and Steve, their wives, Kathy and Paula, and to the stewards, Tim Welch and John Roy, and to members who helped decorate, arrange, and clean up afterwards. It looks like it's going to be an annual event, which sounds like a lot of fun. Harvey won the 50-50 raffle and donated the winnings to the club's Wounded Active Vet service personnel fund. The next meeting was scheduled for January 4th, 2023 at Fairfield Harbor. Of course, that's passed. I have no doubt that there will be something on the book soon as far as a next meeting. More to come. All right. The Garden Club in December. Barbara Monaco Paulson. Thank you so much for writing these. I love the authors that take the time to write uh, these articles. This is great. The Garden Club in December. Welcome to the new year. Fairfield Harbor Garden Club following a very busy December has some exciting events planned for 2023. During late November and early December, the Garden Club was involved in numerous holiday activities. The season started when the group got together to roll pine cones in preparation for the Christmas parade. Pine cone rolling involved rolling pine cones in melted peanut butter, then in bird seed, making fun bird feeders. These were handed out at the Christmas parade. Kathy Fuller once again did an excellent job organizing this activity. That was a lot of fun. Madison scooped up uh, two bird feeders for us, uh, one for her and one for her brother. Um, and we hung them up. And I was telling our neighbors, I think Linda, um, that those birds devoured that bird feeder like super fast. The Fairfield Harbor Garden Club elves decorated the beautiful Christmas tree in the community center. This tree is an annual addition to the holiday decorations found in Fairfield Harbor. Thank you, Jane Hauselhauer, for another beautiful Christmas tree. 
The Garden Club participated in the annual Fairfield Harbor Christmas Parade. The group always enjoys this activity organized by Sandy Riggs. The Garden Club will meet again on January the 9th, 2023. Again, that's passed at this point, but at 9.30 a.m. in the Fairfield Harbor Community Center. Speakers at that January 9th meeting were the owners of North Carolina Landscapes um, that shared information on native plants. We're looking forward to seeing everyone in the new year. For more information on the Garden Club and to see about how you can get involved in the Garden Club, please visit their website. It's fhgardenclub.webs.com. I am not going to read about the Christmas plants or Christmas cactuses since Christmas has passed. Um, but if you would like more information about that, please visit the beacon. There's a lot of information there. All right. And then December 22 in the Fairfield Harbor Yacht Club. That's a good looking group of people right there. Thank you, Elaine, collaborating with Lois and Janice on writing this article. December was a hectic month for the Fairfield Harbor Yacht Club members. It started with past Commodore's food drive held on December 1st, 2nd, and 3rd at the community center. The drive for RCS, Religious Community Services, thank you for spelling out the acronym. I appreciate that so much, um, was organized by immediate past Commodore Adrian Vergott and staffed by past Commodores and Yacht Club members. This annual outreach is a simple way for Fairfield Harbor to assist in the holiday spirit of giving. In our current, in our current economy, the donations of food and monetary gifts will make a significant impact for those that are trying to make ends meet in our local communities. The club collected a truckload, 1,295 pounds of non-perishables and $2,750 in cash donations. That's amazing. This is the photo of the group. RCS is Mark Devaney, Randall Church from RCS, Julia Thompson, Commodore Barb Robinson, Steve Hustad. Sorry. And then left to right, past Commodore Adrian Vergott and Aaron Vergott. Anita English and her elves organized members to participate in the Fairfield Harbor Christmas Parade this year, getting everyone in place on time. The parade is always a chance to represent different organizations. The Yacht Club usually has several well-decorated seasonal boats and marching members throwing candy and greeting neighbors and friends. The Fairfield Harbor Yacht Club held its 2022 holiday party, Jingle Away, at Carolina Colors on December 8th. Members enjoyed a delicious dinner catered by the Chelsea and danced the night away to tunes provided by BTA Entertainment. A highlight of the evening, evening was the Salvation Army collecting gifts donated to their annual Christmas Angel Program, an effort led by Linda Lelly, another neighbor of mine. It was a lovely event. Attendees enjoyed a lively cocktail hour, a sit-down dinner, holiday music, and fabulous dancing. It indeed was good food, drinks, friends, and great times. Janice Myler and her committee of Kathy Sanzon, Paula Mink, helped make this a fantastic event. And then it was a beautiful Saturday night on December 10th as daylight faded and the harbor was illuminated with a thousand lights and the season spirit embraced us all. This is one of our favorite parts of living here in New Bern and Fairfield Harbor. An unbelievable, spectacular display of decorated boats cruised through Fairfield waters and touched the hearts of all. Cruising captain Phil Katz planned and orchestrated the event, which many believe is the best ever flotilla. Everything from a canoe to a 40-foot boat was lit up in resident canoeer, cannoneer, Ralph Azerski made it a memorable evening. There were 17 Fairfield Harbor Yacht Club member boats and two Fairfield Harbor resident boats comprising four sailboats, 14 power boats, all led by rowboat Nell, powered by Melissa and Jerry Drake with their dog Bodie. Club members Laura Lori Eakins commented, We have been to the Moorhead City, Beaufort, and New Bern flotillas for years, and the Fairfield Harbor Yacht Club flotilla last night is the best we have ever seen. Such a treat. Thank you to all who did so much work to decorate their boats and participated. Cookies started to disappear as soon as members arrived. Can you imagine? 
Following an amazing 2022 Fairfield Harbor Yacht Club parade of lights, club members and guests attended a gathering at the community center to put a nightcap on the evening. After the cold temperatures on the water, the group enjoyed a bounty of cookies brought by attendees. Hot cocoa was provided and there may have even been some holiday spirits passed around. Everyone enjoyed a holiday bingo game that encouraged learning things about other members of the club by que by asking questions and filling out a bingo card. Of course, holiday music, cookies, and socializing with club members were all magical. The Fairfield Harbor Yacht Club is an active boating club with many additional activities and service projects. Information about membership in the Fairfield Harbor Yacht Club is available on the website fhyc.us or by contacting membership co-chairs Pam Miller or Paula Hibbs. Phipps, the Yacht Club will kick off the new year with the New Year's Eve fun race at 1300 hours. Happy New Year to all. That's a great article. I love the flotillas. I had never lived on the water before we moved to New Bern, um, and that is definitely a highlight. All right, let's read about the Point Restaurant and Harbor Point Golf Club. Women's Golf at Harbor Point Golf Club by Cindy Pellegrini. Informal shootouts, 18-hole golf is available to women on Mondays, Tuesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays throughout the whole year. From mid-November through mid-March when our HP LGA... I was trying to put that together really quick to tell you what that meant. I'm not going to be able to do that. Um, pause. We add Thursday winter shootout golf. We draw balls to determine teams for some competitive games. And since we use net scores for our team play, we have a USGA handicap necessary. To join in the fun contact captains of the day, you want to play and add your name and email to our contact list. When you receive each week's emailed invitation announcing the available times assigned by the pro shop, reply all if you'd like to play. No need to respond if you're not playing. But on the play day, arrive a half hour before the first tee time. Bring a golf ball, a dollar for the game, a quarter for the closet to pin prize, to the pin prize, and a few dimes and nickels. We play for long putts and chip ins within one's foursome or threesome. We are golfers with a wide range of abilities. We play for fun within USGA rules, and you are welcome to join us. All right, so here's the shootout captains. These are also on the um, shop pro shop wall opposite the help desk. So on Mondays, it's Sharon Hinky, Tuesdays, Donna Holbert, Thursdays, Geneva Lane, November to March, Fridays, Cindy Pellegrini, and Saturdays, Barbara Walsh. And all of their email addresses are here for your convenience in the Beacon newsletter. That sounds like a lot of fun. All right, here's the Harbor Point Golf update. By Brian Joyner. We all know him from the newsletter as the pro shop point of contact for several things related to our community. So member tea times and handicap seminar. That was today, Tuesday, the 17th at 4 p.m. at the restaurant to go over how to sign up for tournaments and tea times through the website. I've never gotten so many phone calls when I was trying to do something in my entire life. Just sorry. <laughs> I'll also give an overview of the handicap system and explain how and why it works. You can RSVP or you could have RSVP before today at four o'clock by emailing Brian Joyner at the golf course. Credit book is expiring December 31st. This is your final reminder to spend that credit book money before the end of the year. So if you didn't do that, it's now too late. Okay. Um, better luck this year spending all of your credit book. There is a frostbite open coming up on Saturday, January 21st at 10 a.m. We talked about this in the newsletter as well this week. Sign up on the website for the frostbite open. There are currently 24 players signed up. This is a four-person handicap scramble format. And you can sign up as a single, twosome, threesome, or foursome. And if your team is less than four, the pro shop will pair you up into foursomes themselves. The entry fee is $25 for members and $50 to the public. Costs include the range golf, prizes, and the soup and potato bar afterwards. The last day to sign up is Wednesday, January the 18th at 5 p.m. So that's tomorrow at 5 p.m. Golf cart sale. Nearing the end of the cart lease and the golf 
the club car has allowed us to sell any of the golf carts for the price of $4,500. Carts will not be available for pickup prior to the new carts coming in May of 2023. But if you want to look at the carts and are interested in the carts that will be for sale, again, they're $4,500. Contact the Pro Shop. You can do that at 252-638-5338 to talk to Brian about coming to see those. All right. Who kidnapped Father Christmas, Gail? You found out if you attended Bill's Hands comical yuletide mystery proof the miscreants christmas at the point restaurant the live comedy play was performed on december 12th and 19th for sold out shows at both events that looks like a lot of fun i love the pictures mother christmas scrooge tiny tim jack frost the heroes of O, henry's gift of the magi and the strange little girl want from christmas carol joined forces to bring their Victorian-style Santa home again. Characters wondered the audience, answering questions about crime, and they got to take a crack at solving just what happened to Father Christmas. The kidnapping crime was solved, and all was well again for Christmas. Congratulations to the sleuth, Laura Griffin, for solving the mystery on December 12th. Dinner theater included the show, a meal, dessert, soft drinks, tax, and gratuity. The audience enjoyed a delightful feast of marinated chicken breasts topped with a seasoned pomegranate reduction sauce and served with garlic roasted potatoes, a vegetable medley, and dessert. I'm so hungry now. Thank you. Stay tuned for more shows that are coming to the Point Restaurant. If you attended Bill Hand's comical Yuletide mystery spoof, The Miscreant's Christmas at the Point Restaurant, you found out. I think we're repeating the same thing. But stay tuned. It sounds like there is more dinner theater coming to the Point Restaurant here soon. Okay. Let's talk golf with Charles Charlie Hinky by Paul Cormier. Cormier? Let's see. Charlie, what are we going to talk about? Did I click on it? I did. This month's Beacon MGA conversation is with longtime resident and Harbor Point Golf Club member Charlie Hinky. Charlie currently serves the MGA as handicap chairman. Charlie also has been a longtime volunteer in Fairfield Harbor with the Property Control Committee and has been chairman of the PCC since 2009. This community would not be as, as successful as it is without tireless volunteers like Charlie. The Men's Golf Association plays on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings and welcomes new Harbor Point Golf Club members to join the MGA. For more information about MGA, please contact Paul. His number is 602-509-2645. All right. Charlie, this is going to be interview style. I'm not going to read. Okay. Charlie, thanks so much for spending time with us today and all the great work you do at the Harbor Point Golf Club in Fairfield Harbor. How long have you been a resident in Fairfield Harbor? Charlie, gosh, time flies. I've been in Fairfield Harbor for about 20 years. When did you start playing golf? I started playing when I was a teenager with a buddy and have been playing ever since. We've heard that you had a special round of golf recently. Can you tell us about it? It was a lot of fun. I shot a gross score of 77, which is one shot from my shooting my age. My net score was 62, and that was the lowest net score for the day. I only made one birdie, made a bunch of pars. The hole looked really big all day, made some nice putts, and I had three chip-ins. Hopefully, I will shoot my age someday. Doesn't get any easier as you get older. Most things are that way, I feel like. Wow, 77 gross, 62 net, and holding three chip shots. Fantastic round. Please tell us about your duties as handicap chairman for MGA and how long have you been in this role at the, at the Harbor Point Golf Club? I review every scorecard from the MGA games on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings to confirm that the score posted is correct. I have been handicap chairman since 2009. That's great. Most clubs have three or four people who would split up that work and do it for such a long period of time is amazing. Do you have a favorite hole at the Harbor Point Golf Course? Not really. I like them all. It's a really ni nice golf course that I never get tired of playing. Lots of variety. There's a difference 
on how I can play it from day to day. It really is a solid layout, one through 18, and always a great condition. Do you have any other courses other than Harbor Point Golf Club that you've played that are memorable? Torrey Pines in La Jolla, California, Pinehurst Number 2, TPC Sawgrass, and three great places I've played. My son used to live in San Diego, and we would get to Torrey at 5.30 a.m. to get a tee time five hours later. Pinehurst Number 2 was very difficult to keep approach shots on the greens. Lots of slope on the greens. And TPC Sawgrass is special. Both nines start out with easier holds and get progressively harder. I did par the iconic par 3, 17th great hole. Who's in your dream foursome? Arnold Palmer, Roy McElroy, Jordan Spieth, and myself. What's your greatest memory of playing an MGA event over the last 20 years? My greatest memories are the friendships that I've made. That is what it's all about. I always show up early and enjoy chatting with the guys. I enjoy welcoming new members to the MGA, Harbor Point Golf Club, and the beautiful community of Fairfield Harbor. I also made a hole in one on number nine two years ago that I will remember forever. Charlie, thank you so much for spending your time with us and for giving us your story. This was great. You are a wonderful asset to the Harbor Point Golf Club in Fairfield Harbor. All right. POA sponsored events. Alex Williams is going to return for another POA sponsor concert. Deb or Debeen, thank you so much for writing this article. Back by popular demand, Alex Williams is going to return for our Music Under the Stars concert April 15th and September 15th of 2023. Go ahead and put it on your calendar. April 15th, September 15th, 2023. Alex Williams returns for Music Under the Stars. It was a huge hit on October 21st, 2022, when he played at Pelican Park. Alex is a legendary singer from Cool and the Gang, and he rocked the night with three hours of nonstop music entertainment. The free event was sponsored by the Fairfield Harbor POA. Be on the lookout for special events committee calendar coming soon. I, I have not heard the name Cool and the Gang in a really long time. God, great. All right, here is our note. We got several more sections. That's okay. I'm going to bookmark this for us so we don't have to go through this every time, okay? Um, if you want to skip around and listen to different articles. Fairfield Harbor 2023 calendars. This was Kate Castle. The calendars have shipped. Con calendars containing beautiful photos by residents of the harbor will be available for sale at the POA office soon. Look for the announcements of their arrival. They're a wonderful way to showcase the beautiful landscape that makes Fairfield Harbor such a desirable place to live. They also make great gifts at just $10 each. Thanks, Kate. Can't wait to see them. I love the preview picture in the newsletter this week. It's going to be exciting. And Gail, we're going to welcome Pam Harless to... The office. Pam is going to join the POA office team this month as our new administrative assistant. She is a retired dental hygienist and former front desk coordinator who is very familiar with a working, busy office over the past 30 years. Pam has enjoyed meeting many of the residents that have already come into the office to say, hey, Pam moves to Fairfield Harbor from Huntsville, Alabama in November of 2020 when her husband, Mike, Mike's job at Shamrock Environmental brought them to New Bern. Pam and Mike have four children and two dogs, Heidi and Zoe. They enjoy traveling and spending time at the beach. Pamela loves Fairfield Harbor and is looking forward to getting more involved in the community. Please stop by the office when you can and say hey to Pam and welcome her to this new role within the office. I talked to her on the phone the other day. Super informative. Pam Gaskell, Hospital Auxiliary. Lots of photos here, blankets, dolls, pillows. Looks like a holiday event. I will not read through all the photo descriptions, but the Fairfield Harbor Satellite Auxiliary of Carolina East Medical Center did not hold a regular meeting in December. Instead, members were invited to the annual meeting of the Volunteer Auxiliary and an appreciation luncheon at the Flame on December 13th. Officers were sworn in as part of that business meeting. 
Officers for 2023 include Chairperson Ruth Blackwell, Vice Chairperson Holly Woodcock, Secretary Sue Bischoff, Treasurer Mary Florence, and Assistant Secretary Andy Ostar. Of note is that Fairfield Harbor resident Joy Maloney is Chair of the Main Auxiliary. Items needed to fill 200 handmade Christmas stockings have been assembled and stuffed into the stockings and will be delivered to hospitalized patients on December 23rd by Ruth Blackwell, Joyce Stull, and Linda Nyland. Regular meetings will resume on Monday, January the 16th. That was earlier this week. Um, at 9.30 at the Community Center, you are invited to join them to see what they're all about. Join us in service to others if you wish. Membership information can be found by contacting Chairperson Ruth Blackwell or Membership Chair Darlene Madorma. Thanks, ladies, for all you do for Carolina East and those patients. I'm sure those folks that were going to be hospitalized during Christmas really appreciated those stockings. All right, tennis and pickleball classes now open for enrollment spring. So it's going to be getting warmer. It's going to be in the 70s tomorrow. So if you're watching this today, I'm going to try to post it on the 17th. Tomorrow and Thursday, it's supposed to be in the 70s. Tennis and pickleball classes are open for enrollment. We are excited to announce the launch of our spring tennis and pickleball classes now open. For enrollment, I'll say it again, come join this new and exciting Fairfield Harbor sponsored program. All right, so I'll try to do this better than I did it in the um, newsletter earlier this week. So the spring program schedule is going to be for both tennis and pickleball is going to be March 4th through May 6th, skipping April the 8th. Cost is going to be $85. There are multi-participant discounts available. So if you have more, more than one person uh, participating and you're signing up as a group, there are discounts available. Again, it's just $85 per person. And again, the dates are March 4th through May 6th for the programming schedule. Tennis times for the classes are going to be eight and under. Beginner and intermediate is Saturdays from 10 to 11 a.m., 10 and under beginner and intermediates is Saturdays 11 to noon, 14 and under and 18 and under beginner and intermediate Saturdays from 9 to 10, and adults beginner and intermediate is going to be Saturdays from 9 to 10 as well. For pickleball schedule, those dates are March 8th through May the 3rd, so just a few days shy of the tennis schedule. Adult beginner classes are Wednesdays from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. And adult intermediates are Wednesdays from 6.30 to 7.30. If you have questions, you can call or email info at tennisblock, T-E-N-N-I-S-B-L-O-C dot com, and they will be happy to help. And then in the beacon, there are links to click on tennis and pickleball programs to get more information. Last article for this edition of The Beacon, the Fairfield Harbor Chorus upcoming concerts. Terry Knickerbocker, thanks so much for telling us about this. So on behalf of the Fairfield Harbor Chorus, I would like to thank the residents of Fairfield Harbor for your continued support and generosity at the 2022 Christmas concerts. It's truly a pleasure to be able to perform for such a large and enthusiastic audience. We hope you all enjoyed this presentation and will once again join us for a spring concert slated for May 12th, 2023 at the, Compu at the Community Center. May 14th, 2023 at St. Andrew's Lutheran Church and May 15th at the Community Center. Put those on your calendar. So spring concerts from the Fairfield Harbor Chorus will be May 12th and 15th at the Community Center and May 14th at St. Andrew's Lutheran Church. Thanks, Terry, for letting us know about that. And that concludes the January 2023 volume 39 edition of the beacon. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you liked it in the comments on the YouTube channel. 
or on the Facebook page. Um, I've really enjoyed doing these this week. Um, and there's a lot of other things. So on the YouTube channel, there are shorts that have different things I'm going to be posting uh, related to living in Fairfield Harbor. I've also got some pictures posted um, in the community tab. The community tab is a way for us all to connect on things that are specific to Fairfield Harbor and things that we are all interested in out and about in the greater New Bern area. So I hope you'll take the time to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Turn on notifications by clicking on the bell so that you don't miss anything. And then like any videos that you find valuable or helpful. And with that, I hope you have a great rest of the week. And I will talk to you soon.